All right, today we're going to talk about a problem that's massive, it's dangerous, and it's completely invisible. We're looking way, way up at the silent junkyard that's orbiting our planet. So you have to wonder, how did our cosmic highway get so jammed with junk? And, more importantly, what in the world can we do about it? Let's get into it. Okay, to really get the danger here, you have to wrap your head around the speed. We're talking over 17,000 miles per hour in low Earth orbit. At that velocity, something as tiny as a flake of paint hits with the force of a bowling ball. Seriously, it's not about the size of the object. It's the insane kinetic energy it's carrying. And we're not just talking about a few stray paint chips. Nope, scientists figure there are millions of pieces of this stuff circling our planet. Some are big enough to track, but countless more are too small. This is everything from tiny little fragments to whole bus-sized satellites, just ghost ships from the dawn of the space age, silently tumbling through the dark. So what is all this junk, really? Let's take a closer look at this crowded, silent sky we've created. Well, you've got the obvious stuff. The big things, like old satellites that have run out of fuel and the upper stages of rockets we've just left up there. But then you get the weirder things. You know, like tools that an astronaut dropped during a spacewalk, or even lens caps. But the biggest category by far? That's the collision fragments. All the tiny, sharp pieces left over from things that have already crashed into each other. Now, this is where the problem goes from being just a hazard to being, well, potentially catastrophic. It's not just about dodging one piece of junk at a time, we're talking about the risk of a domino effect happening right over our heads. And that brings us to this really chilling idea called the Kessler Syndrome. It was first proposed way back in 1978. The basic idea is terrifyingly simple. You reach a tipping point where there's so much junk in orbit, the collisions just start happening on their own. And each one of those crashes creates a cloud of new debris, which leads to more crashes, a runaway chain reaction that could literally trap us on Earth for generations. And here's how it would play out. It all starts with one collision, just two objects hitting each other. But that impact shatters them into thousands of new pieces of shrapnel. That new debris field then spreads out, which makes hitting something else way more likely. And every new crash just adds more and more debris to the mix, and the whole problem just spirals exponentially out of control. So why should we care? I mean, it's all happening way up there, right? Well, because almost every part of our modern world runs on satellites. The GPS that gets you around town, the weather forecast you check on your phone, even swiping your credit card. All of it depends on this incredibly fragile network that's flying through a cosmic shooting gallery. And listen, this isn't some far-off sci-fi scenario anymore. This is real, and it's happening now. The International Space Station has had to fire its thrusters to dodge debris multiple times. And back in 2009, a dead Russian satellite actually slammed into a working U.S. satellite. That one event created thousands of new pieces of high-speed junk. The threat is here. Okay, so that's the problem, and it is a big one. But the good news? There are brilliant people working on this. A new generation of innovators, a kind of cosmic cleanup crew, is developing some absolutely incredible ways to tackle this mess head-on. And some of the ideas are seriously straight out of science fiction. We're talking about spacecraft that chase down junk with giant nets, or others that fire harpoons to spear old satellites and drag them out of orbit. People are designing robotic arms, powerful space tugs to push debris down, and even massive lasers on the ground to nudge junk out of the way. Let's just compare a few of these. A giant net is great for capturing a big piece of tumbling debris and just dragging it down until it burns up in the atmosphere. A harpoon is much more direct. You can target one specific satellite and pull it out. And then there's laser ablation, which is just fascinating. Instead of destroying the debris, you use a laser from Earth to gently heat it, creating a tiny puff of gas that nudges it, slowing it down just enough so that its orbit eventually decays. Pretty clever, right? But here's the thing. All the cool technology in the world isn't enough. Cleaning up the existing mess is one thing, but we also have to stop making it worse. And that means we need a whole new set of rules for how we operate in space. Really, the big goal is this. We need a system for space that looks a lot like our air traffic control system here on Earth. Imagine a global, coordinated effort to track everything, predict where things are going to be, and manage the flow of satellites so it's all safe and sustainable. A real blueprint for success pretty much boils down to three main things. First, everybody has to work together on tracking. You can't dodge what you can't see. 
Second, we need new rules that say any new satellite has to have a plan for how it's going to be removed at the end of its life. And third, we need to make it profitable to clean up space. We need to create real economic incentives for companies to go up there and do this work. So all of this, it brings us to a really critical moment. We're at a crossroads for our future in space, and honestly, the choices we make right now are going to decide whether that future is even possible. This quote just says it all, doesn't it? We can't just be tourists in space, using it and leaving our trash behind. We have to become stewards. We have to actively manage this environment. It isn't just a nice idea. It's absolutely essential for everything we ever hope to do beyond Earth. When you lay it all out, the choice couldn't be more clear. On one path, if we do nothing, we get that cascade effect. We lose the satellites we depend on, and the final frontier effectively closes. But on the other path, if we act, we get sustainable exploration, a much safer orbit, and a whole new economy built around keeping it that way. So we're left with this one question. As we become more and more reliant on space, as our dreams of exploring the solar system get bigger and bigger, we have a choice to make. Yeah, the mess we've made is a huge challenge, but you know what? It's also an opportunity, a chance to prove that we can be responsible stewards of this incredible final frontier. The future of our cosmic highway is, quite literally, in our hands. <laughs>